Hello. Today I will be discussing segmental pressures in pulse volume recordings, PVRs. This is Gary. He will be our patient for today. Gary has been experiencing some pain in his lower extremities and his doctor has ordered a lower extremity segmental pressures exam with PVR. Segmental pressures is a technique that compares limb blood pressure to systemic pressures in the arms. First thing, the patient will need to be undressed from the waist down, including shoes and socks, but can leave on their underwear. The patient should be in the supine position for about 5 to 10 minutes before starting the exam. There are two types of methods for a segmental pressures exam, a 3-cuff and a 4-cuff method. A 3-cuff method will include a thigh cuff, calf cuff, and ankle cuff, shown on Gary's right side. The 3-cuff method should show equal or greater pressures to brachial pressure. The 4-cuff method will include two thigh cuffs, a calf cuff, and an ankle cuff, shown here on Gary's left side. The major difference between the two is that the 4-cuff method is better at differentiating between inflow disease and femoral artery disease, aside from the obvious one less cuff used in the 3-cuff method. In this video, we will use the 4-cuff method. After the patient has been rested for a brief time, you will put on the blood pressure cuffs snugly and attach them to the segmental pressure machine. If the patient has had a shunt or graft in either arm, do not take the blood pressures in that arm. Also, if the patient has any open wounds, they should be covered with plastic wrap or a bandage. The machine used in my clinical site has coated, color-coded hoses. White is used for brachial, blue for high thigh, green for low thigh, yellow for calf, and orange for ankle. If a digit is needed, then a black hose will be connected. After asking the necessary questions and explaining the exam to the patient, you will begin with the brachial pressures. With the continuous wave pencil probe, you will locate the radial artery in the arm. Once you have a strong waveform, you will use the remote to inflate the cuff. Hold the inflate button until the signal is gone and then release. The cuff will bleed back on its own. When the signal returns, freeze the frame and quickly deflate the cuff. You will then scroll back to the first pulse and acquire the pressure with the save button on the remote. This reading is the systolic pressure. Then you will repeat on the other arm. You will use the higher of the two pressures for calculations. If there's a greater than 20 pressure difference between the arms, this could indicate subclavian artery stenosis. The process is relatively the same all the way up the leg. I say up the leg because after the brachial pressures are taken, the next step is to locate the dorsalis pedis artery between the two ligaments where the leg meets the foot or between the great toe and second toe on the right leg. After locating a strong signal, you will use the remote to inflate the cuff. Hold the inflate button until the signal is gone and then release. The cuff will bleed back on its own until the signal returns. Freeze the frame and quickly deflate the cuff. You will then scroll back to the first pulse and acquire the pressures with the save button on the remote. You will repeat the same process with the ankle cuff with the posterior tibial artery behind the medial malleolus. After locating a strong signal at the posterior tibial artery, you will use the remote to inflate the cuff. Hold the inflate button until the signal is gone and then release. The cuff will bleed back on its own until the signal returns, freeze the frame, and quickly deflate the cuff. You will then scroll back to the first pulse and acquire that pressure with the save button on the remote. For the next three pressures, you will keep the probe on the posterior tibial artery and then move up to the calf pressure, low thigh pressure, and high thigh pressure. Before continuing to the thigh cuffs, make sure you let the patient know that these cuffs squeeze very tightly and it can be uncomfortable. Then you will repeat for the left leg. After both legs are completed, the next step is pulse volume recording. The machine will automatically take you to the screen once the pressures are complete. PVRs record the change in limb volume related to each cardiac cycle. The pressure cuffs will stay on and the remote will be used to inflate the cuffs. The cuffs will inflate sequentially at a lower pressure from the top of the thigh to the ankles or the toes. While the cuffs are inflating, a waveform will appear on the screen. Wait for the waveform to stabilize. If the waveform is too small or too low or too hard to hear, you can turn these settings up or down with the remote. 
Once a good set of waveforms is available, freeze, select the set you want, and acquire them with the save button on the remote. Continue down the leg until all the sets are acquired. Once everything is completed, a worksheet will be created and sent electronically to the PAC system. The worksheet will look something like this. It shows the PVR recordings and the pressures for each segment. We will use this example case study to interpret. The ABI for the right leg is 0.56 and the ABI for the left leg is 0.65, which indicates probable claudication in both legs. The pressure drop between the brachial and high thigh on the right leg is 45 millimeters of mercury, which is an indication of inflow disease. The PVR waveforms on the right are a little less severe all the way down, however, the right ankle shows signs of moderate disease and metatarsals show severe disease, also consistent with significant occlusive disease. There was no signal in the left or salus penis artery. The PR PVR waveforms show significant deterioration of the left calf, which indicates superficial femoral artery occlusive disease. As you can see, the above the knee shows mild disease, the below the knee shows moderate disease, and the ankle and metatarsals show severe disease. The left ankle and metatarsal PVRs are blunted, consistent with significant occlusive disease. Thank you.